Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. You know what it is, man. It's your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome to Dog in the Yard. Got my con rap with me, boxing dice. What's goody? What's goody, baby, man? How you doing, man? What's, what you got? What you got up your sleeves for today, man? I mean, I just want to just vibe with you, you know, because I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm, I want to just vibe. Period about the whole quarantine, you know, what I've been doing with myself, you know, I've just been cleaning house, you know, garages, my my closet, my old sneakers, or, you know, things that I even forgot that I had, because if you have something and you forgot you have it, then it's that, it, that's not even important to have it, <laughs> so it's time to get rid of it, you know what I'm saying, so that's how I'm doing it, I'm, I'm getting rid of any anything that I don't use and all that, you know, because most, you know, the majority, like, like me, like most of you guys out there, we always on the run. We got jobs, people got you know work to do, and you know other responsibilities of life going on. But now that we on sh- time out and we on pause, this is the time to work on self and work on your craft. You know what I'm saying, Dice? Like work on your craft, yeah, work yeah. on your relationship. Doing, if you, I'm doing that myself. Exactly. Man. If, that myself. All we have is each other. You know what I'm saying? And all you have is who who in the house with you now like you so we got to start appreciating who we have and what we have in our life because life is too short you know what i'm saying dice and like, and like, life is too short for the negativity man like you said you know me me personally all i've been doing is working in on the house man you know what i'm saying fixing stuff up what needs to be fixed but you know you start neglecting stuff you know so me and wifey just been catching up with the house you know the outside you know fixing it up for the summer you know and trying to get even though we ain't going nowhere we ain't doing nothing but you know, you just keep yourself entertained. You know, you got you know, find you know things to do, and, and there's always things to do in the house. It doesn't matter. There's always things to do in the house. Listen, you know what I've been telling brothers? I have a lot of friends, right? And a lot of my friends they overweight. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot of them is like you know they they afraid to even work out because they never pretty they 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 never worked out. You know, a yeah, lot of they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start. And and I tell them, man, you know, listen, man, do two push-ups a day, do ten sets of twos. Every week you you increase it, you know what I'm saying. But start doing that because you're gonna feel better. You know what I'm saying. Trust me, it works. You keep working out, you work on yourself. Go outside, even if you smoke ten blunts a day and you're lazy and you fucking fried up and all that. Listen, trust me, man. You will feel better. You know what I'm saying. So I'm just wanted to throw that out there, dice, because I've been, you know, I get lazy myself too. You know, I go from yeah. going on a diet to feeling comfortable, you know, and I'm home with the kids and it's like, you know, let me just eat my ass off and the kids always want to eat ice cream and, you know, I got, you know, I got seven kids and three little young ones in the house. So you already know, pantry is on deck, you know, with snacks, you know. Yeah, and, you get caught up eating what know, they eating. Yeah, so they all day, daddy this, daddy this, yo, eat this with me, especially if you always on the move and all that. But, you know, let's just try to, you know, be disciplined. Let's not lose focus. We gotta stay healthy. You know, we you see what we all going through. So that just tell you it's, it's a life changing. So we all need to start thinking on health. I'm gonna start. You know, as the weeks go along on the show, I'm gonna be adding some workout routines. Dice is gonna also have some workout routines. You know, we're gonna have that. All that's gonna be seen only on the uh, patreoncom slash uh, dog in the yard. You have to subscribe on there, you know. So if you're not hip to it, it's it's, it's on my profile. Just hit the link and go to Patreon.com/slash Dog in the Yard. You will also see in the upcoming episodes uh, the day in the life of Pistol Pete. You know, so we working, you know, and this is what we do. You know, you you we we locked up. We in our house all day. We get creative. You know what I'm saying? Let's 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 get creative. Let's not stop working. You know, let's let's get let's make it better. Let's make it more interesting. You know. And I'm working on my little craft there, you know, where, where, where I'm advising people that are going to prison. You know, if you blew trial and stuff like that, you know, you hit me up on BoxingDice1, you know, dot com. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'll advise you what to do, what not to do, what to take, what not to take. 
Facts. You know, and and you know, I just give you the best advice I could. You know, because once once you're going in there, man, you need to go with everything you could, bro. Facts. Listen, man, we keeping it 100. We keeping it real all the time with you guys. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? This is that platform, you know, and with all further ado, I don't want to keep holding this shit up. Let's get right into the Christina interview. You know, like I say, you know, to about all my interviews and all my episodes, you know, is a legend. You know what I'm saying? This one, this one is another one. You know, with that being said, let's get right to it. Christina, Brooklyn, stand up. Dog oh, in the yard. God. Man, I want to just take the time out to thank my guys up there, Jake and Ben, for doing an amazing job with this pen. This is that Dom CBD pen. These guys took their time doing this pen. It tastes great. They do them three different flavors, berry, mint, and mango. My favorite is berry, just to let you know, guys. You know, I know a lot of people out there dealing with pain, you know, dealing with anxiety, the way I deal with anxiety. And I'm telling you guys, it works for me. If you want to place your order today, you're more than welcome. You just hit up domecbd.co, punch in the code, dog in the yard, and you get your 15% off early. So for those people that's out there that's going through it right now and is stressed out in the house, that don't smoke marijuana, trust me, my brothers, this CBD pen does it all, man. Place your order today, man. It's your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard. You already know. Dog in the yard, Pistol Pete, we got Christina in the building. I've never been around so many females my age, like, at one time. And the area that we actually had was, like, cell area. So when I first came inside the house from intake, I didn't see nobody. Then when I came out of lock-in, there was, like, 30, 40 girls looking at me and my cold defender, like, who were these bitches? She did three and a half years for Robert being in Brooklyn. It's real, it's... I mean, I'm not taking away from the women that did jail time, and I know for the men it's horrible, but it's like, stay away. There's so much more things that you can do. Like I pointed out earlier, it's all about your people, places, and things, and that's the shit that will tie you up and fuck you up every single time. And then when you are in there, you turn around. None of those people are there for you. Absolutely. But everybody got a bottle when you come home. Everybody got a blunt when you come home. And we walking you to the dog in the yard. Glad to be here. So what's up, Christina? How's everything, man? Welcome to the show. Everything's good. Thanks for having me. So um, you did three and a half years. Yes. How long you been home? I've been home now three years. No, two years. I'm sorry. Two years. Can you give me a little background about your, about yourself? Like you know, as far as um, were you raised and all that, and how you came about getting in trouble and all that. All right. So I've always been raised in Brooklyn. I'm actually a good kid. Come from a good home. I got the two parents and whatnot. My situation with me was just always people's places and things and thinking I'm grown before I actually turn grown, which ended up in me actually becoming an adult in prison. Okay, so um, so you got in trouble with you, was robbing something? Like, what happened? No, my hunger had picked us up from school, so we took a trip to go get some weed with her homeboys, and it was a conspiracy charge. So her homeboys went upstairs, did what they did, and due to me being there, that brought me the conspiracy charge that I got, which was robbery. So um, they locked you. What, what, what jails you went to? I went to Rosie's, and then I went to Bedford. And how long you was in Bedford? I was only in Bedford for like two and a half months. Most of my case was on Rikers Island because I have co-defendants, so we was fighting it for a while. So you went back to uh, where you was at again before that? Rosie's to on Rosie's, Rikers. Yeah. On Rikers Island. Okay. And that's what you was So why was your experience there there? I mean, being a good girl, not never been in trouble and stuff like that and going to Rikers Island. Like for me, and I know it might sound crazy, but like I always lived in like a high school TV series. Like not that I wasn't trying to deal with the reality, but I had to make the best of the situation in order for me to keep my sanity. And when I got arrested, I was 17 years old. So that's why I said it's like high school for me because when I first went there, I've never been around so many females my age, like, at one time. And the area that we actually had was, like, cell area. So when I first came inside the house from intake, I didn't see nobody. Then when mm. I came out of lock-in, there was, like, 30, 40 girls looking at me and my cold defender, like, who were these bitches? Uh. Fresh meat. But I just kept my same face because... I'm not an angry person, nothing like that. There's been times where I've had to defend myself, but other than that, I just took it how it was. 
So did you did you ever experience, you know, as far as like getting in trouble while you was in there? Hell yeah, I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so tell me, tell me what are the tr- what are the troubles you got into? Well, I believe the first thing that brought me to trouble was medication. Hmm. When I first got there, I was trying to figure out why are these girls so big. And I can see them, like, when they go into the shower area, I hear a lot of sniffing and crushing and things like that. So one day I went up to the girl, and I'm like, what makes you guys fall asleep at 7, 8 o'clock? I'm in a day room with 30 people by 7 o'clock. There's only six or five of us there, five or six of us there. So she's like, just go to, you know, like, the, um, I forgot what it's called, but, like, the mental health clinic and just tell them that you can't sleep. Hmm. So when I told them that I couldn't sleep, they put me on 50 grams of Seroquel. That changed my whole life. I have no experience with medication whatsoever. I'm not ADHD active, anxiety. It was never none of that prior to me taking that medication. Mm. So I feel like that medication brought out like a lot of anger in me. Like it wasn't me no more. Like I started feeling like a whole different person because it became an addiction. Mm. And then just to highlight a few things, like they were just drugging us kids up. There's no way in hell you're telling me all 30 of these kids have an anxiety, anger, depression, disorder. Everybody's taking the same thing. They had us on Seroquel, Remron, Respital. They allowed the officers to, like, give in these slips stating that they believe we should be on day medication to keep us up and night medication to keep us down. So that that made me very angry. Yeah, that's horrible, man. Shit. So mm-hmm. they, so they, so you was, so how long you, you had a problem when you came home or... Because you was on it. How you got off the pills? No, I actually weaned myself out of it when I went to the box. I okay, spent for, a lot for, of time for, in solitary for, confinement. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. So so how long you spent in the box? I want to say, realistically, probably out of the three and a half years I was sentenced to, I did at least 16, 18 months periodically, all in the box. And how was that like? I know this is going to sound crazy, too, but it was actually a bittersweet moment for me. The reason why I say it's bittersweet was because I was able to find myself in that alone and that downtime that I had. Like, there was so much going on, you know, like with the cliques, my family, my case, my co-defendants. There was just so many things going on, and my mind was just spinning and spinning and spinning, and it kept me away from the bullshit. But you're also locking yourself away like you're in a room for 23 hours straight. I'm a female. Everybody knows a female has her monthly, all kinds of things. I'm subjected to one shower. I don't eat the food that they give me. So I went from being 230 pounds at a point to coming out the box and weighing 170 light like it was nothing. That's how much weight you lost, didn't it? Weight. I lost a lot of weight. And you was going to court back and forth from there? I only went to court once from there. Okay, Okay. so you just, what, the second time you just copped out or? Wait, what do you mean? It's when you was on Rikers Island. I went to court a few times. Yeah, okay, so then when you copped out and you went to your, um, meaning, you know, like, say you was, they was doing this to you on Rikers Island? Mm-hmm. This all happened on Rikers Island. My so experience you, at Bedford wasn't... It was, it, was about, it, was way, it was better than Rikers Island. It was way better than Rikers Island. Hmm. But for the most part, the trials and tribulations I went through all happened at Rikers Island. Hmm. So um, is there anything that you can remember that you went through or you seen... Uh, um, that you experienced while you was incarcerated and in the box. Yeah, well, definitely. What was one of those? So I remember there was a point in time between, like, November and February, I was sentenced to, like, doing over 120 days in the box. And they had just passed a law, like, for the whole New York City jail that people that were under 18 can't be in the box. So I was hype. I was already, like, 30, 40 days in. My homegirls is kiting me. I'm getting kites. They're like, yo, bitch, you about to come out. We got this. We got that for you when you come. And, you know, I will never forget it. The warden and the whole security team, they came directly to my door. I thought they was like, oh, Johnson, pack up, this, this, and that. She knocked on that door and said, you're not going anywhere. You're going to give me all my being time. And that's it. And she just walked away. She wanted all that AC shoes, all that special. She wanted yeah. all of that. And when I tell you there was, like, nothing I can do, there was nobody to turn to, the yeah. phone was broken, I couldn't call my family, so I couldn't reach out to, like, internal affairs or anything. I just had to do what I had to do. So you wound up doing the whole thing? The whole thing. Whole 120 days. That's how far it is. That's how they be doing it. Yep. Those are the things that people don't know about. You know what I'm saying? So it's important sometimes, you know, for us to share that. You know what I'm saying? So like that, you know, whoever's listening, whoever's, you know, any youth out there, anybody might be going through or even thinking about, 
jail or being down or beating them. This shit is real. It's real. It's, I mean, I'm not taking away from the women that did jail time, and I know for the men it's horrible, but it's like, stay away. There's so much more things that you can do. Like I pointed out earlier, it's all about your people, places, and things, and that's the shit that will tie you up and fuck you up every single time. And then when you are in there, you turn around, none of those people are there for you. Absolutely. But everybody got a bottle when you come home. Everybody got a blunt when you come home. That's the truth. But nobody had ten dollars in commissary for you. Facts. So how long you been home now? I've been home now since July sixteenth, twenty sixteen. Hmm. When you came home, did the transition of being locked up and you you on parole? Yes. How long are you on parole for? I get off parole in the next four months. Oh, you happy? I'm hype. <laughs> Ooh, let's get it, girl. That's a good thing. Um, so are, you, are they strict with you or what? You got no, perfume? I'm level four. I don't have anything. Oh, so you're good. Yep, I just report every four months. Okay, that's good. Um, what do you think about um, prison reform? So as far as prison reform, I would definitely say, like, speaking on behalf of an adolescent, mm-hmm. there was no resources for us when we were adolescents. Like, they shut down everything. Like, even if you knew that you were on your way home or things like that, there was no backup plan. I believe they should have more backup plans for people that are coming home from incarceration because when they come home, most people are institutionalized. They're stuck to living their life one way, and that's just in getting it done, sleeping, then waking up and having another day, opposed to actually going home and having to grind and hustle for every single thing that you got. Everything out here costs money. Everything is really expensive. And then, you know, if you got a felony, that's a closed door in your face right away it's hard to find a job Mm -hmm. nobody was there to prep me on job searches and how school might go and things like that so I feel like there was more resources opposed to specifically like how people specifically always point out closing records but then closing records and doing what what about for those people that went through everything that they went through in there they come home and now they have nothing well, you know, them closing brackets islands, they just gonna just move everybody out and they're gonna make prison in every borough or something like that. So the help is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be hard, man. Because they, 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 everybody gets money off of everybody being in prison. Yeah, I heard they make like $2,000 a day for keeping us there. Yeah, so there's a lot of money in it. You know, so, but um, since you've been home, what you, what you been doing? Well, I work for the Fortune Society. I started off as a intern and a client there. And then from there, a few months later, I got pregnant, and I just knew nobody in the world was going to hire me. <laughs> oh, man. But then it was brought up to me, and they was like, hey, Christina, from working with us and networking with you, we really think you're, like, really good for the Fortune Society. Like, we can do things with you. I actually did an equality summit for them at the Bloomberg building, so that felt good. So I guess they like my personality from there. So now I've been working there for over a year. Let's give it up for Christina. That's what's up. I'm the youngest supervisor and the youngest employee there, so cool. I give myself props for that. That's right. So I'm thankful for the opportunity to actually even be working there. It's amazing. It's one thing I'm to get up and just work thank you but I actually love my job I love what I do I love the interaction with people like I come across people like I'm the face of I'm the, I'm the receptionist so when I come in I'm meeting people that are doing 30 years I've only been on this earth for 23 hmm. so to meet them and for them to say hey that good morning and that smile just meant the world to me like that means the world to me knowing that I can have that effect on that person it meant a lot to me you do got that face thank you <laughs> for real, you got that. <laughs> you got that cool face, man. Thank you for coming, Christina. Man, Thank I appreciate you, for you know me. for coming by. You know me because this is this is for the youth. This platform is for you know for the females that have been incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? You know that they never had somebody you know their story or, or never heard anything like you know what you went through and to what you experienced. You know that. So and <clears throat> hopefully by them even listening to us or watching us and all that, they be able to you know say like, wow, you know. That girl right there, you know, her little her story, what she, what she told as far as that shit was real. You know what I'm saying? And they might not want to go that route. You know what I'm saying? If, if we could change, you know, one person out of five, then we might be okay. Just you to know? make a change. That's yeah. what means the world to me. So thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hey man, I want to just take the time out to thank my guys up there, Jake and Ben, for doing an amazing job with this pen. This is that Dom CBD pen. These guys take their time doing this pen. It tastes great. They do them three different flavors, berry, mint, and mango. My favorite is berry, just to let you know, guys. You know, I know a lot of people out there dealing with pain, you know, 
dealing with anxiety the way I deal with anxiety. And I'm telling you guys, it works for me. If you want to place your order today, you're more than welcome. You just hit up domecbd.co, punch in the code, dog in the yard, and you get your 15% off early. So for those people that's out there that's going through it right now and is stressed out in the house, that don't smoke marijuana, trust me, my brothers, this CBD pimp does it all, man. Place your order today, man. It's your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard. You already know. Hey, guys, what you think about that interview, man? Because that I think that interview was legend. I mean, she 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 went through, you know, she went from not knowing anything and almost uh, uh, vision visioning her, her her the jail shit and all that because she watching TVs and movies and all that, and and she took that and when she went to jail, she was like, oh shit, this is like a, you know, a movie, but it wasn't. No. You know, it was yeah, a dose of reality, a dose of reality for her. Yeah, shit really hit, and she did some time, and even though she did three and a half years, you know, let's not get it twisted, people. She did some hard time. She spent some time in the box. You know what I'm saying? You know, we, I know, you know, I mean, it wasn't easy for her, man. So It's crazy, man, because, like, you said at the beginning, man, you know, that this girl had her mother and father, and what changed her whole life was a bad decision, man. A bad decision and bad company, and then that could happen to anyone, and that and and that goes out to a lot of these young girls. You know what right. I'm saying? That that be following friends. You know, they want to say they're not leaders; they're followers. Mm -hmm. You follow the wrong person, you fall off a cliff, man. Facts. You feel me? You know, cause cause this girl, this girl's life could have been anything else. She's 17 years old, Pete, man. She should have been waiting on her prom. You know, getting ready for her promise of that. No, she's on she, she, she's on the medication line in Rikers Island, and that's another thing. You you see you see what she said? She said they came and it, they didn't want to attend to the girls. They didn't want the seals. Didn't want to do their job, so they medicate them. Yeah, that's crazy. To make their job easier. Yeah, but but now you're creating you're creating two dependencies. You're saying that all right, I'm giving you this medication, med, a mental health medication. You dig what I'm saying? And then you're creating a. Uh, 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 some some kind of um, how would you say you create you create another drug. issue you create another problem because now you you giving them you down if, if this girl if this girl wasn't as smart as she was that she woke up you know for what she was doing she could have came out here with a habit a drug habit Fact. you know what I'm saying because now she's addicted to these pills yeah she don't she didn't have no mental health issue she just wanted to sleep up bit away that's yep. what she wanted to do the same way the other girls were doing listen man I want to thank Christina for coming by. Um, like I always say, the story was legend. And um appreciate you have having you here on my show. And um, you know, with that being said, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, sh she was able to open up the eyes to all the youth out there, all the young ladies out there that they out there, you know, already know, wilding and, you know, with no sense of direction. So with that being said, till next time, dog in the yard, your boy Pistol. Box and dice.